wapi siku ile ya kwanza ya juma pale walipokuwapo wanafunzi milango imefungwa kwa hofu ya wayahudi akaja Yesu akasimama katikati akawaambia amani iwe kwenu naye akisha kusema hayo akawaonyesha mikono yake na ubavu wake basi wale wanafunzi wakafurahi walipomuona bwana basi Yesu akawaambia tena Amani iwe kwenu kama baba alivyonituma mimi mimi nami nimewapeleka ninyi naye akisha kusema hayo akawavuvia akawaambia pokeeni roho mtakatifu wowote mtakao waondolea dhambi wameondolewa na wowote mtakao fungia dhambi wamefungiwa neno la bwana we wish you i think that is a way also to start to reflect on the readings of today and especially also about our life that the peace is with us i think that if you would ask many of us here today as they are seated here whether they are priests or brothers or people on the other side so to say the way you follow christ has much to do with peace peace in your heart joy in your heart that in christ you find that quiet and calm that otherwise you find difficult to achieve and maybe that is even why in principle you come to church not so much in the first place so to say to receive the sacrament as such how important it might be but because in your heart you receive prayer you receive peace when you come to church there's a quiet and a silence that comes over you when you talk Christ when Christ is with us i think it is a common experience for many of us that whatever cares and problems we have when we share with him when we pray when we are in the church there is at least many times peace that comes over us sometimes even you might see it in church when people around you pray you see it on their faces that this wish of Jesus becomes true at that point at that moment in their lives peace be with you and in that sense of course the disciples were not different from us they were as human as we are and they had their own problems their own doubts their own fears and in fact that day of pentecost they had closed the doors out of fear for the Jews because they thought that what happened to Christ that is crucifixion could also happen to them so they had locked themselves up didn't want to appear in public didn't want to reveal their problems didn't want to show who they really are disciples of Christ remember how peter himself had said on that dark night before the crucifixion i do not know this man he denied christ three times and in the sense that the disciples were there in that room with the windows and the door closed was another sign of that denial 
afraid, no courage, no strength and energy, locked up. But the good thing is, and that is also what is mentioned, they prayed. In spite of everything that was happening, they didn't stop praying. So maybe that is one of the first things we can le learn from them. That whatever happens in your life, how dark and desperate your life might be, how little hope and love there might be, keep on praying. Don't give up. But continue to ask the Lord that He might enlighten you. Many of the religious vocations, and we have many religious here among us today, in fact, depart from that point. Peace. Peace in your heart. A peace which is so deep, so profound, that you cannot deny it. And that in a sense, it is a bit like what Jesus says somewhere in the Gospel, like this pearl in the fields that you find and you're ready to sell everything in order to find that pearl in order that it be yours in a sense that that peace remain with you forever the peace of Christ but and that is the way a vocation has to go that is the way the grace of God works it doesn't remain with peace a religious who sits on his chair the whole day in church is not a good religious. That grace of God that he gives us needs to be fruitful, needs to be active. And that is what we heard also in the gospel of today, how the disciples went out. Went out into the world. A world of which up to a few hours before they thought was threatening them. They were afraid of. They had closed the doors. But now the Spirit opened the doors, not only the doors of the room where they were staying, but also the doors of their hearts, giving them courage and love to go out into the world and to announce the good news. A religious, but also a Christian, who is not ready to go out, who is not ready to sow the seed, so to say, is not a true Christian, is not a true religious. The seed of Christ needs to be sown in order that it be fruitful all over the world. And yes, when you get active, it will cost you energy. You have to invest. You have to put sacrifice in there. It will make you tired and maybe even exhausted. We heard today in the readings how the disciples started to speak many languages and that people from all over the different peoples of the different countries of the Empire of Rome that was so to say the known world at that point. And they all hear Jesus, the, the disciples speak in their own language. I nearly would say to my brothers here, if you want to announce the word of Christ, you have to study languages in order to touch the heart of people. It's not enough to remain with yourself and in your own culture and in tradition, your own language. You need to open up. You need to be able to open the hearts of the ones you speak to. There is this famous saying of a Jewish woman of my own country, at the Hillesim, a woman who was in her 20s just before the Second World War. And she had some problems and her psychiatrist who was a very religious man etc at the write a diary every day you write down what you think and feel what your thoughts are 
and Andy really didn't believe in God. But the psychiatrist, the Jew as well, he believed. And you see in the diary how very slowly but surely she comes to the faith. And she writes a very beautiful little prayer in that diary where she writes, Lord God, make me, let me make, let me open the doors and the windows of the hearts of the people around me so that you may enter. By the way, you see how she's using exactly the images of Pentecost where the doors and the windows are opened while she herself had never read the gospel. She didn't even know about it, but the Spirit was speaking through her. We are all called to speak to others with the language of the heart. We as priests, but religious, lay people, we do not need to be very rational. You do not need to know a lot. You do not need to have studied. You do not need any titles to be a good Christian. What you need is a good heart. A heart, in fact, as Paul the Apostle had explained to us today, where he speaks of it, he speaks of a, the fruit of the Spirit, he says, is love, is joy, is peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are not things you study at school. These are not things you get a doctorate for. These are things you learn while living with Christ. Today the fathers of the Holy Ghost, they have concluded their chapter. A plus and Lieberman are the founders, that is 17th century. That was a time of turmoil in Europe. There was a revolution that went through it. People were killed, monks were hanged, churches were burned. It is in that time more or less that this congregation was born. A bit like the time of the Apostles. Turmoil. Turmoil in your life. Turmoil in history. Turmoil in our actual world. Covid. A United States that doesn't know where to go. An old president goes, a new president comes. We have no idea where all it will end. Many countries are in one way or another in a, in a crisis. Climate change, pollution, economic crisis. So many things, they come together at this point. But once again, it is also a, a sign of hope. It was in a time of turmoil that this congregation was born and is fruitful till the day of today. We're speaking about, what is it, 350 years of history and of fruitfulness and of going out to the people, which is the calling especially of our fathers here to be with those who have been rejected, to do the ministries within the church which others are not ready to pick up, to live in the peripheries of society and of this world. And it is one of the reasons why we are also here today in Tangle Bay, which seems to be at the periphery of Kenya in many ways. But with the presence of the fathers here, they want to pull the people of Tangle Bay 
into the center, into the heart of Christ, which is the center of this world, where love beats, where peace is gathered. We together, here today, whether member of the congregation or not, but we all share in that belief that in Christ we find peace. And the peace of Christ is for free. You don't pay for it. The beauty of the peace of Christ is that he gives it to us though we do not merit it. Christ will never ask you whether you have been a good boy or a good, good girl. Jesus, in that sense, is not like our parents. How are our parents? I mean, my parents were like that, and I assume your parents were also like that. If you behave well, your parents will love you. If you build mischief, your parents will beat you. God is not like that. God loves you in spite of all your mischief. God loves you in spite of all your problems. God loves you in spite of all your sins and dark corners in your hearts that you may be not even ready to share with anyone in this world. God knows about your darkest secrets and everyone has those dark secrets, but God does not give up on you. God continues to love you. God continues, as we heard in the Gospel of today, because that's the gift of the Holy Spirit. God continues to forgive you your sins because He loves you without limit. God's love is without limit. God's love will never say no to you. God's love is always yes. You see what kind of beautiful God we have? Imagine that one of us, but it's nearly impossible, that one of us would be like Christ himself with that kind of attitude. Imagine how his neighborhood would be, how his family would be, how he would attract people to himself just merely by this attitude of love for each and every one of us. Imagine what the world would look like if we only had six or seven of them. How already that would build up a new world of people who, not are, who are not interested in their own success, who are not interested in career, who are not interested in filling their pockets, but who are living truly for the other, giving their lives completely like Christ himself did. Spiritans, your call is exactly that, to give your life for Christ to those at the periphery those who many times, many times do not even know how to say thank you. Who many times will receive and immediately turn your back to you. Who have no gratitude. Who may even want to destroy you. But your, li your love is without conditions, preconditions. It is a love that gives and does not ask anything in return as the Spirit continues to give. That is then, in this Eucharist, once again pray in a special way for the Spiritans, but also for all of us as we are present here today, that the Lord may fill us with His Spirit which is a spirit of mercy, which is a spirit of forgiveness, which is a spirit of consolation, which is a spirit of peace.
and of love. Amen.